still two. And these become the language, really. So that they're laid out in a grid and then they're completely they're glued down, gilded, either with silver, gold or copper, and then they're removed so that it becomes a question of the conversation that I'm having at that point through, through applying colour and paint and thought so that each work just keeps going until it's till I think it's finished or I'm finished really with it so they're, they're, they're light letters but they come from the processes of, of, of thinking and action and naturally occurring processes. I think the the damage we've done really as a species to ourselves and to the earth is partly about not really knowing where we are, the knowing not knowing where here is, so that that we're constantly looking for something else elsewhere. We don't quite know what elsewhere is either. A lot of the projects in the last couple of years really have been making um, soil uh, out of text. So this this has just come back from the Herbert Gallery in Coventry Cathedral where we were showing uh, the, the conversion really of uh, Eliot's famous wasteland poem. Into uh, into soil, so I shredded a thousand copies of the wasteland uh, at um, about 80 80 percent paper, and the rest is vegetative matter that is uh, wasted food that me and Annie might might uh, discard. Uh, and over a year, it creates a soil that sustains. In fact, it'll sustain life. Uh, after about 27 days. There was a number of artists who, as a student, I loved. So Joseph Boyce would have been very influential. A number of artists are influential on that. For me, they opened that door, really, where I could begin to, to uh, look at a place for art, um, which is what I was thinking about and wondering you know, was there a place for me who, who, in that, in that world, really, not the art world, but in the world in general? What, you know, I have these thoughts. How do I express them? How do I communicate them? The Nyman's project was a pretty major project, really, which kind of has its origins in my interest in where things come from. Um, and in this particular case, it was a commission uh, for a famous garden called Nyman's. Uh, and I went to the garden and started really by just collecting a series of uh, cuttings, which I pressed. And there was about 60 that I collected. Uh, and then started to look for, um, well, working with Joff and Ollie, uh, looking at how it could become an alphabet and it would be the first alphabet where I could say well the origin of this R is this plant which comes from this place in this garden so it, it was a very direct look at the origins of something. When I say in talks you know that the earth doesn't care what happens to what we do, what happens to us because the earth is, is the most complex system, most beyond us. We, have, we don't understand it yet. And we know that trees talk, we're, oh, everything is chatting away all the time. And it's, a, it's like a neural network that the whole thing is so complex. Um, and it, it'll cope very well without us, you know. So we need to know that as, a, as the beginning of the whole thing so that we understand that we're not the champions of it all. We're not the kind of so superior species that, that the earth will, will bend to our will, which tends to be how we've thought about it. We've forgotten 
actually, essentially, I think over centuries, we've just forgotten about where we are.